Good morning. I hope everybody is doing really well and the sun is shining, but It is really cold. There is a frost out on the grass and it's, it was 31, eh, you know, it's probably about 32, 33 right now. So it is starting to, where the sun is hitting, if there's, you know, there's no frost now, but oh, I was really hoping that I could get out and start working in my garden, but I am not gonna get out if it's that cold. I just, I'm not, not gonna do that. But last night, if you can see behind me, yeah. I decided that I was going to try to make a chocolate chip cookie that was out of the one of the cookbooks that I got. And the reason I did not put it on video is because it said that I needed to use a food processor and I don't have a food processor. So I thought, well, you know what, I'm just going to use my mixer and I'm going to see what happens. And you know what, you don't need a food processor. Yeah. These made really, really good chocolate chip cookies. Let me tell you, they are soft. If you like a soft cookie, they are a soft cookie. They are totally soft and they are wonderful. And they are totally gluten-free and grain-free and dairy-free. Really, really good. So anyways, yeah, that's kind of what I did here. I have these cookies and I, I just got to munch on one. What can I say? But actually, I'm not going to be making those cookies today. I am going to make them a week from today so that I can have them nice and fresh for when we get together on Sunday the 23rd and um, my daughter-in-law, who can't have any of those wonderful things, will be able to enjoy a chocolate chip cookie. That's good. I'm thinking about making out of the same book. It is um, called Peanut Butter Cookies. And guess what? It's not made with peanut butter. It's made with almond butter or, what is it? Sunflower butter. So I don't have sunflower butter. I do have almond butter. I might give that a try. We'll see how it goes. But I wanted to show you what I made my husband for dinner because yesterday I told you that I was gonna make him a cob salad yeah that didn't happen no what I neglected to tell you is that I got really lazy and I took him out to our local little diner and he had some breakfast there yeah he had chicken fried steak because <laughs> he knows I'm not gonna make that and I'm not gonna make traditional biscuits so he was able to have all that anyways um I'll show you what I did. Yep, I made him a salad. And in here is grilled steak, grilled chicken, some peppers, tomatoes, raspberries, blackberries. These are jalapeno peppers because he likes them. And it's on a bed of lettuce. And my husband doesn't really care for raw onions, so that's why there's no onions in there. If it was my salad, there would be definitely onions in there. And then my homemade ranch dressing from fresh buttermilk. And not the buttermilk you buy at the store. The buttermilk I buy at Duran Farms. So anyways, I'm going to call him to dinner, and hopefully he will enjoy this. And after he gets on to bed, I think I will try those peanut butter cookies. Hope you want to join me. Okay, so here we are with our non-peanut butter, peanut butter cookies. And in here, I have one egg, I have my almond butter, and my shortening. And this is palm shortening, it's not Crisco. In here, I have a quarter of a cup of coconut flour, and it's been sifted plus I have my baking soda. And here is my lemon juice and my vanilla, and this is my honey. And that's all the ingredients we need. So now we're going to mix up the egg and the shortening and the almond butter just for a minute 
on medium high heat. Ah, uh, heat, what am I talking about? Speed. Okay, so now it tells us that what we need to do is add the honey, the vanilla, and the lemon juice, and mix on medium until it's combined. Well, that looks combined to me. And then it says to add the coconut flour that has been sifted with and the baking soda and mix for about 30 seconds and then scrape down the sides of the bowl and mix some more. Oh, I'm gonna have to lift this up. Thirty seconds, and I will scrape it down. And then mix some more. This dough does not look very thick at all. This seems like it might be a bit of a hard time to try to shape cookies into this. Truthfully, I keep looking at the recipe thinking I missed something but I have not but as you can see this is this is quite you know this is gonna be a sticky dough so we'll see how that goes I'll go ahead and I'm gonna get my pans together and I'll show you what it's gonna look like okay as you can see these are this is this is a very rather thin dough it says to drop them by spoonfuls and it's only supposed to make a dozen, so. Onto parchment paper lined baking sheet. And I must have made them a little bit bigger. Because I only have nine. Well, I have ten. I probably can scrape one more out of here. And yeah, I didn't look at how I was setting these on here, did I? So. Probably gonna have to move one over a little bit. I'm telling you, the dough tastes really good. Then it says that we are to take some coconut flour and dip our fork in it, and then that's how you put the traditional little, wow, yeah. That's what I was afraid of. Oh, there we go. We just need to pat it down a little bit really need to get a lot of the coconut flour on there because now it's working and remember with your coconut flours and with any of your nut flours nothing is going to move or rise or get bigger it is very much what you see is what you are going to have if this would have had more dough i could have put a lot more on this paper they're not going to spread and these are going to go into a 350 de degree oven and I believe that they are going to cook for 10 minutes until they're browned around the edges and then cool on a wire rack and I'll show you when they're done. I hope everyone is having just a wonderful day and we are continuing in Peter. Uh, first Peter chapter 1 and we are going to be looking at verses 13 through 16 therefore gird up the loins of your mind be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. In verse 13, the phrase, gird up the loins of your mind, in the ancient world, people had to gather up the long robes they wore in order to be free to do anything that would be energetic, 
that they would need to be able to have good movement, that their robes would not encumber their movement. And they would literally pull them up and they would have like a belt type thing that would hold these up. And in the modern world, I guess the equivalent would be roll up the shirt sleeves of your mind. This verse is telling us to be ready for mental and spiritual activity to exercise self-control and to be self-disciplined and to look forward to the return of Jesus Christ, that our commitment to the Lord is preparing us for coming blessings. And one commentator that I read wrote that Peter was writing about serious times that were not for saints with flabby faith or muddled minds, kind of like that. Peter is telling them and us to live as obedient children. And just as every parent, parent expects their children to listen to them, God expects the same from us. Now keep in mind, God did not promise that we would be free from trials and difficulties because we live obedient lives. We want to live, or at least we should want to live obedient lives because we love the Lord. One day, all the wrongs are going to be put right. But meanwhile, as verse 15 says, we are to be holy. And holiness is a practical outworking. Or maybe a better way of saying that would be working out? Yeah, I think so. Holiness is working out the inward grace that we reflect God in our behavior. I, I try to explain it like this. The holiness that we read about here in verses 15 and 16 is actually linked to the holiness of God. However, many people have a misconception about holiness and what it really means. We're not talking about holier than thou, where we think we're better than other people because no believers, if they really believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, are going to be like the disciples were. They, they were not prideful. They didn't think that they were better than all the other people. Holiness in the New Testament is used in reference to believers who have been made holy through the blood of Christ. When we placed our trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord for our salvation, his blood cleansed us and made us holy. This does not mean that we will be suddenly perfect. It doesn't mean that we will ever be perfect, not on this side of heaven. But we have been positionally made holy. When we are told to be holy, we are being told to be separated from whatever is not consistent with God's word. You see, a Christian is not to shape their life according to the standards of the world. They are not to shape their behavior and lifestyle according to society and its norms. Jesus Christ is our standard. I will often ask myself whether what I am going to say or whether what I want to do or even where I want to go if that is going to show Christ to those around me, if what I'm going to say is going to demonstrate Christ, if where I'm going is demonstrating Christ, and my countenance and my attitude, all these things need to demonstrate Christ in us to those looking at us and watching us and observing us. Our countenance and our attitude, those are important. We need to ask ourselves, are we hurting or are we helping the cause for Christ? And the reason that is, is because verse 16 tells us that we are to be holy as he is holy. And holiness, that's the nature of our Father. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens, so let's enjoy it. 
and let's hold to that standard. The standard is Jesus Christ. The standard is the Word of God and what it says. And no, our holiness is not because we are holy, it's because we have positionally been made holy, because Christ is living in us. He is holy. So God bless, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.